Well, welcome to the November 2nd Capital Finance Community Task Force. My name is Cynthia Cross, and along with Jamie Finch, we are the chair and vice chair of this committee. Thank you all for being here. Um, tonight's meeting, we will be revisiting the criteria and the buckets. In the last meeting, a lot of us struggled with the buckets and the concept of prioritizing them. I ask you to please stick with the exercise and be open about where this takes us. And tonight we will be breaking out into groups, which will give us a chance to dive even deeper and hear each other's points of view. These are important discussions and they do take time. So uh, we really appreciate you staying the extra half hour. I'm pretty um, committed to finishing on, uh, on time, uh, whatever on time ends up being defined as. So uh, hopefully you guys all saw the note that we were planning to go to 830. Um, and I think it's important to, to put that out ahead of time. So um, as a reminder, when you have a question or comment, put the word question or comment in the chat, wait for it to be called upon, and don't put anything material in the chat. Uh, if we do start to run short on time, I might make uh, exceptions to the order to prioritize folks we haven't heard from as much, and that's all I have, which brings us to the next item on the agenda, which is the minutes. So I'm seeking approval of minutes by unanimous consent as presented. I'm not hearing any objections, so the minutes are approved as presented. Go back to my agenda. I think that brings us to public comment. Do we have any public comment this evening? Hi. Um, we do not have a lobby or an attendance area on, on this platform, so I don't see any um, external folks, so I would say you are okay to close the public hearing or public uh, comment portion. All right, hearing none, we'll close public comment. And that brings us to the part of the meeting and we have a presentation. We'll turn it over to, oh, we see titles are so long. De Deputy City Administrator Snyder. <laughs> Thank you, Cynthia. Uh, this is Andrea Snyder. Surprise, surprise, here I am again before you with yet another PowerPoint. I promise uh, this one's pretty short. Uh, also, you know, there are a lot of city staff with us here tonight. Um, while Juliana's uh, learning the trade and uh, Jean Paul is back again to assist with some of these items as well. Um, next slide, please. And um, as uh, Cynthia started off by saying, um, we are going to revisit the criteria, really refine some of the criteria that you all brainstormed last time to eventually determine at least a draft of what those priority areas are. And um, that's the goal for this evening. So just a reminder that we are focusing on buckets, not projects. So those buckets are transportation, facilities, parks, trails, and utilities and trying to determine the priorities among those buckets. That's really the end goal for today. Um, and another uh, reminder that um, we really wanna consider this not as what's most important. We think that all of these things are important for uh, maintaining or improving the quality of life in Issaquah. What we're really talking about is what do we do first? So what are the, the what should be done? What should we focus on immediately? What's more medium term or long term? So kind of that first, second, or third. Next slide, please. So um, today, how we're going to get there is first to clarify some of the criteria, further define what some of those criteria mean. If you looked ahead and read uh, the packet or you reviewed your meeting minute notes, I think there's uh, some room for us to come onto one page of what do these criteria mean. Um, and then possibly use that opportunity to add any other ideas for criteria that you think of as we review these things. Um, please feel free to add more ideas as we move along in this discussion today. And then we're going to vote. We're going to rank the, the criteria um, in terms of which is most important. This way, we really want to distill that list down to something like top five. Um, for criteria for us to consider, because if we come up with 30 criteria and then start to apply them, that gets really confusing really quickly. So, um, and and almost impossible to do. So we really want to consider which criteria are the most important for us to be considering 
Um, are there criteria that weigh heavier than others? Are there criteria that we brainstormed that we're also okay kind of pushing to the side or applying for some future, um, during some future process? So there will be a voting, a live voting function in this meeting. And then we'll take those top criteria that this group has decided, make sure those are still the right ones when all the votes uh, come in. And then um, we'll be asking you to break out into two different groups to then score uh, the buckets, apply those criteria to the buckets, and then, uh, then we'll come back together, report out, and determine, uh, hopefully by consensus, what really those priorities are after we see how they score against the criteria. If we find out that we really don't like that, that list of uh, priorities, then maybe we need to go back and revisit our, our criteria as well. So we see this is kind of an iterative discussion, but that's the process that we propose today. Any questions so far? Okay, so seeing none, we'll move on. Next slide, please. Great. As we look to refine the criteria, I, you know, I've, I spent a lot of time looking at this list that you developed from last time, and there are a couple of criteria that seems just a little bit different than the others. And so these criteria, alignment with strategic plan, environmental impact, opportunity cost, and equity, I thought, maybe apply better at the project level than at the bucket level. And I was having a really hard time thinking of how I would apply them at the bucket level. Um, so what I would propose, and I'm looking for your feedback here, I would propose we take these criteria that you brainstormed and set them aside for now. Um, and these criteria you can choose to um, as part of your recommendations to the mayor and city council, you can say, here's the, here's the bucket priorities as we see them, but when it comes to project selection, we really want you to take these other things into account because we really think these things are important and should be part of the decision making, part of the discussion. Um, that's, that's an option. You know, I don't want to um, have any of the thoughts that you've developed here get totally lost. Um, but I'm just having a hard time applying them um, in my head to the buckets. And so I really open that up um, right now for the group. What are your thoughts on that? Um, would you like us to put these on the list for us to consider and um, score against the buckets um, later this evening? Or are you comfortable setting them aside for now? Andrea, this is Kathy McCory. I'll just go ahead and, and start by saying I do think that they are a great starting point as project criteria. I agree with you, uh, and I think it'd be important not to be lost. Jason has a comment. Thank you, and I'm going to agree with Ms. McCory. I think, like you said, this this makes a little bit more sense as we get down to the individual projects, but when you're looking at the whole of transportation or facilities or parts, um, it seems like, like you said, these would be a little bit more difficult to play. So I'm comfortable with that. Any, any opposed to this idea? Okay, hearing none, um, then I think we'll move forward with that direction. So thank you for that. Um, next slide, please. Okay, this graphic should look familiar from last time. Uh, another one of the criteria that most of you mentioned or supported in the last meeting was that um, criteria of uh, the bucket should be in line with the community survey and the outcomes of the community survey. And so I wanted to dive a little deeper and find out what does that mean. Um, here we have this graphic that you may recall. Uh, the y-axis is the satisfaction rating. The x-axis is the importance rating. And so I'm wondering when we say 
uh, that the project should be based on the results of the community survey. Are, are you suggesting that that means we should look at things within um, the least satisfaction and highest importance quadrant? Or is it just what's highest importance to the community? Because of course, different buckets will score differently uh, depending on what part of this graph we're looking at. So um, I leave that to the group. That's my question. What do we mean when we say that it's um, that it should be uh, based on the results of the community survey? Just Tim, I mean, I guess I'll chime in here. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, was that Council Member Martz had a comment? No problem. Yeah. Sorry, I, um, I can't see everybody. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, I, I, I think this gets, I mean, what you're really talking about is impactfulness, right? And I think sort of by definition, that has to be things that are important, but that people are not satisfied with, right? Because if they're if it's, if they're satisfied, the ability to have impact uh, is is smaller. And if it's not important to people, why should we bother with it? So to me, um, it seems pretty straightforward that uh, that points us towards the more important, less satisfied. Thanks. Sorry, I'm, I've somehow shrunk my chat so small. Council Member Goodman, go ahead. Uh, thanks, um, Stacy here. So the, so we have a strategic. I don't know that this fits squarely within your the answer. My comment fits squarely within your question, but you know we have a strategic plan that's supposed to last five years that we adjust annually or look at it annually, and that is based on community. That's based on the what the community wants supposedly um and so i'm trying to figure out how that dovetails with the the a community survey um in a perfect world they would align but um so i guess that's just a comment to say i know we kind of put the strategic plan to the side but that's also got community feedback in it, like from when we started. So um, to me, I just think of all those as ways that we have gathered the community input. And generally, I could just mention last time, this, the feedback over 20 years tends to be the same. But um, so when we say community, the community survey, I'm not sure how that, differs unless it's more detailed than the strategic plan. Anyway, I'm not sure how intelligible that was, but that's my comment right now. Uh, may I respond, Cynthia? Okay, thank you. Um, so I think, and this is my perception, Council Member Goodman, and I'm only offering it in case it's helpful, um, that the strategic plan, uh, talks about investments in parks and trails. The strategic plan also talks about investments in transportation and facilities as well. And so the strategic plan kind of hits all of these areas. Um, the community survey, I think, is maybe a little bit more specific when it comes to the task of trying to prioritize among those things, um, if, if that's helpful. That's at least my perception when I read the strategic plan and the community survey. Thanks, Mr. Flood and Mr. Voice. Oh, that's very kind of you to say. Um, as, as I look at this, you know, these items are not necessarily synonymous with what we're talking about or what we can impact with our our mission here, right? So I think it would be nice to see this kind of stripped away the things that we really can't have an impact on. If we're not talking about police and fire and trash and recycling, then um, it'll help us focus our efforts on things that we can impact. Um, 
I think the final result is not going to be overly surprising, right? But the traffic and congestion being the, the one that stands out in terms of high importance and low satisfaction. Um, but then it would be interesting to see where the other things that we we do have some potential impact where we could turn the levers where they fall. Um, you know, and I would say gravitate towards where satisfaction was below the median where we could have an impact and and move the move the dot northward. Thank you. I was just going to comment that I think this kind of actually reinforces what we're doing with the buckets. Um, when I think of transportation, I see down there on the higher importance uh, flow of traffic and congestion management on Issaquah Street. So right there, if we're kind of going from last time we met two weeks ago, um, that to me again just kind of says we want to focus on transportation. And then I look right above, it says maintenance of city streets, sidewalks, and infrastructure. So again, to me, that speaks to facilities. And then finally, you, you see skewing up and left is parks and recreation, which would appropriately be what a few, I think, my at least for myself, um, two weeks ago felt was number three. And then you get towards utilities, which I guess you could put water, wastewater, and stormwater services, which exceed expectations. And again, uh, not that we flushed it out completely, but I know there's at least myself felt that utilities could be, for the most part, left alone but it, this matrix actually kind of reinforces i think the way i felt two weeks ago so again you see the flow and traffic in bright red go north you see maintenance of infrastructure skew left towards expectations parks and then exceeding expectations water utilities yeah, Sam, then i can do like a guess let me um i think i might be in now yes you're in I think I'm in. Okay. Welcome, Ron. Welcome. Well, that uh, was that was fun. <laughs> I think uh, yeah, I'm in now. Thanks, Tina. Okay. I'm, I'm in. Okay, so uh, we're just looking at this slide, obviously, and trying to figure out what it means when we say to focus on the community survey as a criteria. And I think Jamie was next. Thanks, Cynthia. Jamie speaking. Um, I mean, I do agree that there's definitely value here, and I, I kind of like uh, Tim's idea of can we start to like strip away the things that aren't relevant? And I actually wonder if, like, I'm just looking back at the slides from the last presentation on within mobility. So, I mean, flow and traffic, flow of traffic and congestion management on East Quest streets. I mean, is that a definition of mobility section? Starting to look at some of the more granular, like, what is what is our definition of these different really important ones? Um, I don't know if it's that simple. That might be something that Gene can weigh in on, on kind of the structure of how it all builds up. But especially as we look to the next slide that we have here of just like our ability to kind of impact the key things that people are, are looking for on these in these different categories, it does seem like, yeah, we could strip away some of the things that aren't relevant and are there areas that we could, especially with the survey responses we already have, start to drill down more and make sure that we understand what that those responses kind of are saying beyond just that these really high level um, feedback. Thank you. Thanks, Jamie. This is Cynthia um, making a comment and I, I kind of said something similar to this last time and I think I just think about what people mean when they say flow and congestion management on streets, I think they mean they mean vehicular traffic. And somebody said it earlier, you know, the things that we can make an impact. Well, obviously we can make an impact if the satisfaction is low and it and you know we think we could improve it. But I just worry a lot. I just the thing that's causing so much anxiety here is just that um we we don't have um really the ability to make an impactful, uh, we don't have the ability to reduce congestion almost at any price uh, over the long term. And what we can improve is the mobility. Um, and does that, is the difference between that, it, I, I'm just really struggling with when people say this is their number one problem, if it's anything less than making it easier to drive your vehicle downtown is it not going to fly 
Um, so I just worry when we have when we think about transportation being so important and that bucket being important, if we're doing, if we say that because we, people said they wanted congestion to be reduced, there's a disconnect there that I'm still concerned about. Thanks. Um, and Susan is next. Yeah, thank you. And building on your comment, Cynthia, I, um, I'm wondering if the, some of the struggle with this particular presentation of the data in this matrix, gets to the bucket level versus the project level because you can kind of see transportation in a few different you know some on the good some on the bad and so maybe it it might be easier just to sort of take this diagram for what it is and almost set it aside and then come back to it once we kind of go through the next step of doing our ranking and, and almost pressure test you know okay now how does that match up with what we're seeing here because I agree with you that it's not like a perfect alignment. It's like not all transportation is one thing and it's not all fitting in one quadrant. So, but I mean, I guess I, I was looking at it as more themes, major themes. And I think the, the major themes are pretty limited. Um, you know, we can kind of count them on, on one hand. I think folks have really called them out here. So at least that's how I'm looking at it. Go ahead, Jamie. Thanks, Cynthia. Um, I had a question for Jean. Um, and I'm just trying to reconcile. So we had, like, I'm just looking at the last week's or last meeting's slides where you have the overall major city services. And then, for example, you dive into mobility where the top, the most important within mobility is ease of travel by public transportation in Issaquah. And then to Susan's point, if you look at public transportation services, they're very low, they're not important. Um, not set. I'm just trying to reconcile those two, and if you could help under, us understand kind of how whether mobility fits into any of these services, or to Susan's point, is it touching a lot of these different ones? Um, that would be helpful just for my understanding. Sure. Thanks for the question, and and I think that gets at how the survey itself was uh, kind of designed. So. Uh, the information portrayed on this slide is specific to major city services. There were follow on questions about each of kind of the different strategic plan areas. So that mobility slide had had different questions tailored towards mobility. Um, I only pulled out the kind of sub areas in the strategic plan that had a relation to infrastructure and kind of capital um, a connection there. So. There were um, potentially, you know, other services identified throughout those questions that didn't have a connection to infrastructure, and I, I didn't pull those out. So, they're, they're connected only so much as where we can see trends or connect them to, to themes, uh, but they're really based off of different questions that the survey uh, consultants asked. Thanks, Jan. And yeah, I'm just trying to understand, like, as I look at that mobility slide. There isn't a huge difference between east of travel by car in Issaquah in the scoring in this scoring approach to some of the other things that I think might be more addressable by the things that we have in the CIP for transportation. So I'm just trying to understand how to how to reconcile that picture with what is shown here on this slide because they just seem to tell different stories. I understand if there's no answer to that. It's, it's but but that's what I'm struggling with a bit between those those two different. Pictures. Like I'm next, so I actually have a question then for Jamie. Can you um, point to what you're talking about? Because I just went and opened that up, and I'm looking at a slide that showed that the flow of traffic and congestion management on Issaquah streets, the that being the mo the first choice, was you like two slides. So you go past the one that we're looking at now in that one, and then you go it survey priorities for investment, and then it's mobility. I don't know then. Oh, oh so right. I see. My question was just for you. I'm still processing what you're describing, so I, I, I'm going to leave it at that. So, um, so 
I've heard a couple of things from this discussion about how we want to use the community survey. I've heard a couple of members of the task force come out in favor of using the community survey as a criteria and really looking at uh, placing the focus in the not satisfied, very important um, as one of the criteria to use um, when selecting the priorities. I've also heard uh, the suggestion to maybe not uh, use it as a criteria, but maybe use it um, as, I think, Susan, your word was a pressure test um, to see if, if the priorities we come up with kind of pass, pass this test or how they can relate to the community survey. And um, any, uh, any more thoughts on this? And if not, then what I would propose is I would propose we add this to that ranked um, voting where we're going to have an opportunity a little bit later in the meeting um, where each member will be able to rank how important um, this criteria is to them to be included in that list uh, to score the buckets against and that it would be included as uh, with with the idea of um, looking at the um, least satisfaction and most importance. Um, and then those who don't want to use it as a criteria can rank it really low in terms of, you know, their their importance they want to place on this criteria. They may want to use it in a different way. Um, this way we can take a vote and see um, what this looks like as we look at the other criteria um, all together. That's what I would propose. Um, does that make sense? I'm looking at you, Cynthia, and also Jamie as chair and vice chair. I think we got to press on and and um, course correct or reevaluate if because I I like that pressure chat. I mean, we'll, it'll yeah. We need to just see how the things shake out. Okay, great. So that's that's what we'll do. Uh, Jean is keeping a running list of the criteria that are brainstormed today and that are added to that list, and so um, I am sure he's already written that on the list. He's giving me a nod. All right, great. Thanks, Jean. Next slide, please. Let's move on. Okay, there are a number of other criteria that were brainstormed last time, and I want to uh, dive deeper, make sure that we all have the same shared understanding of what those criteria are. Um, the first one on this list is, uh, I heard many of you say and agree to the statement that it should, uh, that the bucket, the number one bucket, really should be something that voters would approve of. One of the things that this group will be tasked with, with, and we're really going to get into this discussion next time, is do we look for new revenue tools or do we not look for new revenue tools, right? We're going to revisit that public finance discussion. And so I think some of you are anticipating a, a vote to the public um, about one of those revenue tools. We haven't made that decision yet. You haven't made that uh, recommendation yet as a task force. That's something we'll handle next time. but. Um, I think you're already anticipating this might be something that the voters really need to approve in order to get it done. Um, so as a voter, what compels your support? So thinking of it in this lens of we want it to be something voters would approve of, are there, um, if you think of measures that you have approved in the past or maybe even measures you've opposed in the past, are there certain criteria that you're looking for? that you, um, that attract your support as a voter or repel you <laughs> either way. And maybe that would help us brainstorm additional criteria. That's one question. As a voter, what really compels your support if you think about these past measures? And I think that's probably a really big question. Um, I see that there's some comments already, so I will just pause there. Looks like Susan, start with Susan and then Mr. Flood. Um, yeah, thank you. I, I think one thing that compels me is a sense of return on investment. So what, what I mean by that is, is can my household put some of our money towards something that I think is going to be good for the community, good for my neighborhood, 
good for the types of, um, I don't know, sort of services and experience that I think Issaquah needs to maintain. So I, I feel like if there's, um, if it's going to pay back in some way, uh, and it doesn't have to be a quantitative way, but if it just, if it's, if it, you know, gets us something that we want to get or, um, helps us maintain the spirit of what we already have, that's, that's something that I would like to see. Go ahead, Tim. Um, my opinion, <clears throat> that 4th bullet point that that addresses tangible benefits and then in your neighborhood is kind of 2 different. The 2 different most important points when I think about what would what would a voter support. Um, so, tangible benefits, obviously, um. You know, it doesn't have to be big to be tangible, right? I think, you know, the roundabout by Trader Joe's. Somehow we pulled that off for under a million bucks and like that solves a problem, right? And it's tangible and you can point to that. And that's something that, 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 um, uh, the flashing yellow lights and the no dump trucks down front street, you know, there's little things that can be tangible, but something you can point to and say, it's a good idea. I think we should support that. That's not funded here. Right? And then. You know, I made the point before, but I'll, I'll, this is the time to make it again is, you know, give everybody, you know, we are, if you look at a map, we're just a collection of neighborhoods, right? And, and um, um, you know, have something geographically representative where if you vote for it, at least there's one thing that, that really you experience in your day to day, week to week life, right? Where it's an area that, that's going to impact you um, and make sure we consider all the different geographic constituencies in the city uh, when we, if there's something where we're, we're looking to the voters to approve it. Councilman Marks, thanks. Thank you. Um, I think there's, I think there's 2 perhaps dominant factors that are maybe um, at cross purposes a little 1 is bang for the buck. Uh, and I think it's already been uh, mentioned the idea that it's something that has a large impact for a reasonable amount of money. Um, there are small things with small impact and there are big things with big impact. Um, but I think voters of all political stripes, uh, like it when we're careful with their money. Um, but the other, but the other thing, and, and again, this is in somewhat, maybe a bit contradictory is going big. Um, I think that, uh, people love to see things that will have, that will really move the needle. Right. And I think that in the last transportation uh, bond package, there were things like, I personally loved the idea of uh, uh, sidewalking sunset. Like I know people who, you know, would try to bike from the valley up to the highlands. And uh, I thought it was great, but it was a poster child for uh, something that didn't have, uh, was seen as like a meh out in the community. Um, so, uh, bang for the buck and go big. Thanks. Thanks, Jamie and then um, Kathy. Thanks, Cynthia. Um, I think for me, it uh, often comes down to kind of the narrative that it's telling about, like, where do we want the city to go uh, long term? And for me, if we're voting to what hypothetical situation, voting to approve additional funding for something. I really want to understand, like, what is that going to, like, how is that going to impact, like, Issaquah being different five, 10 years down the road? And I really want to understand kind of the story behind what are these things going to, like, how does this collection of projects or this one large project fit into this narrative around where, at least my idea of where I hope the city is going to be? So that's for me, from a very personal perspective, often how I vote on things is just, do I think that this is really just directionally, are, are we doing something that I feel like is going to be important in five, 10, ten years from now, or, or even more important than it is today? Thank you. I'm, I have to admit, I'm still a little bit confused because I'm not sure if we're still talking about the buckets or if we're talking about the items in the buckets. Um, so, if we're just talking about the buckets um, in general, uh, I think that um, 
what compels support from the voters is going to be first and foremost, because again, we don't necessarily, I'm imagining we're not supposed to be paying attention to what's in the buckets right now, just what's important, you know, what buckets are important. Having said that, if I'm misinterpreting the conversation, then I also think the other thing is, and Tola um, actually touched on this a little bit too, is that is that go big idea. What's going to get us further down the line to all of these other um, uh, visions uh, we're looking at at the city right now in, in um, uh, just uh, climate change, clean energy, things like that. So as we think about the type of city we are and what we want to be, um, do um, what what buckets or projects are going to um, get us closer to that desired outcome? Uh, again, very much like the go big that Tola was speaking of. Thank you. Go ahead, Andrea, and then Stacy. Okay, great. Um... I actually, I will defer to Councilmember Goodman. If she has thoughts to share, I'd love to hear them. Well, um, I'm in a kind of like Tolan and Zach and in kind of an odd position because, uh, so I'm trying to think of how I feel when I vote for things that are on the ballot that are not for the city of Issaquah and what influences me as a voter. Um, so I get annoyed when, um, when I'm being asked to, what am I being asked to approve something that I think that the government should just take care of anyway? Um, it, that's going to cost extra. So, um, the th kinds of smallish projects that, um, that Tim Flood mentioned, um, I wouldn't want to go to the voters and ask them to pay for a roundabout, um, unless it was an incredible roundabout and it was a string of roundabouts. Um, I think like we've got proposed for new Newport Way. So just like one roundabout or the flashing yellows, which you know were like eleven $1 hundred dollars a piece. Um, I think there's some things that we should be able to take care of ourselves without asking the voter voters to subsidize the budget with. Um, and the other thing uh, you said others to add to the list, um, I think I'll say this because I um, I think I use it sometimes in the back of my mind, and I know I heard from other folks during the last bond. It's um, uh, the um, how how you feel the government is responsible with your money, good stewards of it. Um, what's the trust factor? What's the credibility? So those are, I think, things that go through voters' minds. Um, in Ambitious and visionary, yeah, I I would like to go. I would like something to be before me as a voter that um, is big and visionary and and impacts <laughs> impacts the community <clears throat> and makes a difference. So those are my comments. Great. Um, I so thank you for all of these thoughts. Um, as we, uh, I have put all of this on one slide, these other bulleted criteria, life safety, mandated, et cetera, that some of you have already been looking at and commenting on, which is great. Um, I had anticipated, these are all things that you had brainstormed last time. So if they look familiar, that's why. And um, it seemed as though some of these things might be included as answers in that questions of what would, what compels your support as a voter, right? So, um, but I'd like to also spend some time going through that bulleted list and making sure that we all know what all of those words mean and that we can agree on what they mean. And so, cause I also heard some questions about that last time as well. Um, so when we talk about life safety, um, what are the city's responsibilities? I heard uh, in the last meeting, somebody said, you know, life safety should be it if it's, if it's determined to life safety, that's not a very high priority and we should consider it as such. And so when we talk about life safety, that's um, projects, you know, buckets that would be life safety might be considered to be the facilities. There's uh, 
you know, fire station <laughs> associated with that. Life safety might also be transportation improvements, right? Um, depending on the type of project it is, but life safety could be applied at a couple of different buckets. Um, mandated. So as far as the city's mandated responsibilities in regards to the capital improvement projects that we have, it's really mandated responsibilities would be anything with police, fire, and roads, um, just to try to put a, a greater definition on that. Um, and then I wanted to ask a question, and I think, Tim, you were referring to this a little bit earlier in your comments. Um, I heard from a couple of you last time, address is a pain point. You want that priority to really address or solve a pain point. And my question is, um, is this a per is it necessary for it to be a personal pain point, something that you personally encounter every day, or a recognized community pain point? Are there thoughts on that? Uh, I see sure. Jamie has a question, but I don't know if Jamie, if you wanted to. It was on the mandated it. point. I'm sorry. It, my question was on the mandated point. I don't. I don't want to interrupt Andrea's flow. She's. I, I just wanted to better understand mandated. Like I understand those are services that are mandated, but does that mean the underlying project? Like I'm trying to understand how that applies at the project or investment. Like, yeah. How does that apply to projects that would be related versus, I mean, obviously we need to provide a, a fire service, but what is, how do you, how do the projects under that uh, hold up? It, yeah, it's a great question. So um, the, the city is required to provide in some way for um, police and fire and roads were required to do those things. Um, how we do it is always, you know, subject to choice. Um, therefore, we uh, we need to, because we're required to provide those services, we're also required to provide the facilities necessary to provide those services. Um, so very difficult to provide for fire services, as an example, if we didn't have any fire stations in town. I don't think our effectiveness would be very good. Um, so that's an example. Um, I, I'm not really trying to tie it to any specific project. I think my only point is um, there are things that are on that mandated list that pertain to the buckets and there are things that aren't. So I did not list, for example, parks and trails. Um, that's, not, that's not a mandated service. I would say though our community um, quite uh, placed a lot of value in that, but it's not mandated in the same way that those other services are. So really thinking about it at the bucket level. Um, you know, one topic that's for discussion next time is how we pay for these things. Do we pay for them out of existing funds and prioritize existing funds? Or do we pay for them out of a new revenue source? And so that's a conversation that we will marry with next time. Um, but as we talk about these buckets, I know there were questions about what is mandated and how does that pertain to them. I'm really trying to keep keep the conversation at that high level without um, trying to examine every single project. So I hope that, yeah, that my Yeah, my point wasn't the project. I was just trying to understand how it would actually apply to our decision on what, like at the even at the bucket level, but what you described was, was helpful. So thank you, thank you, Andrea. Um, Tim, go ahead. Uh, I guess just a sort of a response. Um, I like I like how kind of everyone's take on, it, especially Councilman uh, Martz and Goodman. It, we're taking this sort of empathetic view, right? I think we we can take we have to take a more widespread empathetic view across the city and and take different constituencies and all these different factors as we as we weigh what we want to sort of advance or bubble up to the top of our priorities. But at the same time, we have to think like a voter that's got a ballot and say, okay, if I'm this kind of persona here, what's going to, um, you know, move the needle for me? And, um, and in my opinion, it is, you know, you, you, there's some sense of empathy you can expect from some portion of the city. And, and, and there are some people that um, what's going to convince them is kind of what's in it for me. Right? And something more tangible and close to home. 
So it's not easy to, to balance both, but I think um, it's good as we go through this to sort of show empathy for the constituents out there as they get the ballot. If it's something that, you know, I'm not suggesting we go ask them for, you know, flashing yellow lights. I was just trying to give an example of something tangible, but if we do go out and, and, and uh, issue a bond and, and ask for um, folks for their property taxes to go up, then, um, you know, be empathetic that there's something in it for them. Tim, can I ask a clarification? Um, the question I had asked was, is this, does it have to be a personal pain point that we address or a community pain point? Are you saying, are you saying community pain point? Or am I oversimplifying what you said? I, I think um, if I live in the Highlands and I see this pack, you know, you're coming to me for a package and it's $50 million and none of that is in the Highlands. I'm much less likely to vote for that. Right? And so I may agree that that turn lane for Talus or, you know, Newport way where there's been development that that's that's worthy. But development should have paid for that. There's nothing in there for the Highlands. I'm not going to vote for this. Right? And I think we have to expect there's a. A good percentage, a plurality of voters that are going to think like that. And so, um, you know, there's a, you know, there's only so much altruism you can expect from the average voter out there. I think you do have to give something a little more tangible, a little more um, um, close to home for the different, you know, ge geographic constituencies in the city. That's just my take. Thank you. Other other thoughts. I I hear Tim saying it should you should we should be thinking about this more as addressing personal pain points across across the city when we consider which buckets kind of have more of those types of things in them. Um, Go ahead, Susan. Um, I actually was thinking about it maybe. A little bit differently. I appreciate the the you know I want to see something that impacts my neighborhood. I think that's important to consider. But I was also translating it back to the matrix that we were talking about earlier, which is a a consistent and longitudinal theme that we're hearing across many in the community around a bucket of transportation. So that's where I feel like um, as long as it's a tangible benefit that everybody can benefit from in some way, that that is something that might earn the, either if it's the vote of the voters or um, support of the community, I think that's something that we can look at too. So I, I guess what I'm, I'm saying is, I don't know that it's either or. <laughs> I think some issues might be more personal and some issues might be more community-wide and you know benefit a number of members. And I actually had one other question, um, if it's okay, or Cynthia, if you wanna go ahead, you can come back to me. Go ahead. Um, so my question was actually uh, a follow-up on something that was brought up last meeting, um, I think by council member Hall and, and maybe a couple of others as well. And it was on that fourth bucket of utilities. And I think we talked about maybe setting that aside and letting that kind of be self-funding. I think that was one idea, but the other idea I think that uh, council member Hall brought up is, you know, we also may want to open up that bucket and take a look inside and put that on the table for, um, for consideration, because if we could potentially reduce costs for the average homeowner or, or then and you know not increase utility costs or maybe even decrease utility costs and yet still accomplish some of the things that needed to be done that could be something that we would want to look into so therefore i guess my question is are we doing utilities or are we not and if we are does that concept of utilities as kind of a self-funding entity does that bring up any other criteria that um, folks might want to think about, like, uh, you know, cut my taxes, you know, or or something like that? It's not not taxes per se, but you know, cut the amount of money that I'm, uh, you know, paying out uh, for these city services. Is there 
Is there anything else we might kind of consider or would you suggest that we set aside that whole conversation? Is, is that question for me or are you asking it of the group? Well, I was sort of asking it of the group, but Andrea, I'll, uh, I'll take your, your suggestion on whether to maybe deal with that question now or just put it in the parking lot. I, I'm fine. I guess I just wanted to not lose track of that, of that discussion because I don't think we really sort of tied it up in a bow yet. Yeah. Okay, great. I'll, I'll take a first uh, try at answering and I'd love to hear any other opinions from the task force members. Um, I think with the process that we have set up today, we're looking at all of those buckets. I agree with you. We have not uh, tied a bow on that conversation. And so my hope is that as we refine these criteria and then vote on the criteria and then apply the criteria to the buckets, that that conversation of do we include utilities, do we not include utilities, that's when we can kind of conclude that conversation. Um, and so, uh, or if we include utilities, where is that on our priority ranking, right? Um, so that's that's my hope. I think you raise a really interesting question of if we're thinking about utilities, does that change the criteria? And and I think that's a that's a great question. So I I I would ask that of the rest of the group. Are there criteria on this list that we have not thought about yet? And you know, thinking about utilities or really any of the other buckets. Because um, that's part of this too. Let's make sure that the list of criteria is whole and complete. Thank you, Susan and Andrea. And then, um, I think I was next in the comments, and I'm gonna um, kind of maybe tie it back. I, I wasn't quite done with the the pain point and the the question about pain point for your individuals or for this community, but I was actually thinking that for me, it's for the community. Um, the people here and the people that will be here in the future, but also to me, it's addressing a pain point in a way that's um, going to solve a systemic, solve it systemically, as opposed to like a quick fix kind of thing. Um, and so addresses a pain point, like into the future. Um, and I just, and so this also kind of circle back to what you just said, Andrew, like what else is not on here? So I don't know if we, if it's open, if we're, if we can tweak these, add to these, I'm not sure where we are on the conversation. Um, and it looks like um, Mr. Boyce has a comment and Mr. Flood has another comment, but I guess maybe I just take a pause here and just, can you remind us when we get into the breakouts, are we going to pr be prioritizing the criteria? So we need to come to an agreement on what's on the list before we go into those breakouts. Can you just do it? So, so I'm trying to figure out how much we have to solve right now before we break out. I just lost a little bit of track. Yeah, great question. Now is the time to tweak, amend, change, add um, onto the criteria because as Gina is collecting that list of criteria that we discussed right now, that's when we'll go into the ranked voting. When we're done voting, that's when we'll break out into the breakout sessions and use the results of the voting. So, um, so now is the time to make sure that this list is inclusive of everything you'd like to see on the list. And then we vote to kind of narrow it down. So then if somebody wants to modify, so I'm saying you asked a question, do we mean this pain point for an individual or for the community? I say it's for the community and I say, I want to tweak it and say addresses a pain point for the community over a lot, you know, in a systemic way for the future. Does everybody have to agree that that's a modification we're willing to make? Like, I'm just not quite sure if everyone. Um, I'm not sure. How you want to modify ones that already exist, how we would do that as a group. Or just say it and then see if anybody has right. an objection. <laughs> It, yeah, I think that's one way is to say it and see if you're getting general, you know, thumbs up, head nods, consensus. I would also offer in this particular case for this point, I'm wondering if um, this would be a way to move forward. I also heard, I think it was, uh, I think it was Jamie who said uh, something about 
thinking about the impact in the future and thinking future forward. And so I'm wondering if, you know, that I've added uh, to my list of criteria, something that's thinking a little bit future forward and having future impacts. And I'm wondering if that is a criteria for you to consider, does that capture um, what you were, um, part of what you were thinking, Cynthia? It does capture part of it. It doesn't capture the pain part of it, but mm -hmm. it does. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to go out of order and call on Stacy because she was wanting to comment on that comment. I and was just wondering back. if we if we could add a bullet point. One says addresses. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so you sorry. If we could just add one two addresses pain point. One is across the city and one's more specific. I'm seeing nods. I don't know. I can't, I can't see everyone at the same time, but everyone looks like we're nodding. And then we, and then they shake out, right? If they don't get, if they're not prioritized. Um, I'm going to go back to Mr. Voice and then follow on. Go ahead uh, right after him, Mr. Flood. You have an unenvious task, Chair Crass, because I, I, I feel your pain. I know what you're trying to do, but and like you said, how do you do it in the process? And, um, so for me, a few things, just real quickly, if those were the top seven that percolated from our last meeting, it kind of seems to me like this is, that was a lot of the brainstorming. And I think to the point that uh, council member Goodman and Chair Crass had just made, if we want to tweak it, I really, really appreciate Vice Chair Finch's comment of being future forward. You know, I think Tim had made the comment that we're kind of a collection of neighborhoods and then we became incorporated and then we're a wonderful township. Um, and again, I know I've said this probably in other meetings for other places, but it's so important that, like I said, we're trying to plan for the next 20, 30 and 40 years. And it got me thinking about the way I vote. So when I see like the educational um, stuff that comes through the ballot, you know, when I'm voting in favor for those things, it's because one, I want our kids to have a great education, but it's a return on investment because um, we we see with our, our newest member tonight, you know, that these wonderful adults, they go, they get their education from Issaquah, and sometimes they come back and, and continue to contribute to the community. Um, so I think that's kind of the way I think. And like I said, I think um, Vice Chair Finch's comments kind of dovetail perfectly with that. So I would like to see that as an extra bullet point. Is this a future forward um, project? Is this going to contribute for this city in the next 10 to 15, 20 years? Um, again, we, we want to be a city with strategic vision, uh, not just happen, you know, kind of stumbling into all these different decisions and becoming this conglomeration of just a hodgepodge of different decisions made over many years. So I really, really appreciated that. I would add that myself. As far as the utilities, I, I personally, the reason I don't think I'm trying to even think about them is because, again, the rates, that's really up to, I believe, the city. Unless we were to do something like the blending facility, and then we would have to bring it up, but that's not on the cards right now. It's not in the cards right now, and it's not something we're discussing as far as this task force. So, again, it's something out of sight and out of mind to myself. Um, and then it's not that I, I wouldn't appreciate a tax break. I, I think everybody, especially in 2021, wouldn't mind one. But it's almost like we're opening up a whole other can of worms if we try to figure out, because really we're here to figure out how to prioritize projects. And I don't know if keeping rates down or offering that is really a capital improvement project. So it's just that's where my mind starts to get a little bit scrambled if we start throwing that into the salad. Um, so again, my just for my comments, I think our list is probably pretty good. Uh, the pain points, I think, like you said, you got to keep that more towards the city than just people personally. Um, I like the ambitious and visionary projects. I just think. And again, I'm not talking about a roundabout. I think you're going to be able to do more across the city by having a few smaller projects. I think I mentioned this last time and you'll be able to benefit more neighborhoods. And I really do like how Tim kind of put it, which is, you know, we are just a conglomeration of neighborhoods at this point. Um, so, again, that might be able to kind of spread that around the city a lot better than just 1 major uh, ambitious project. So, that's what I'm thinking. I'll 
I'll be succinct. I know I've spoken more than anyone here. I feel a little bit bad, but all these to me speak to they, they really look like they're focused on transportation, which me personally is, is my top priority in this, I would say. Uh, but the one thing I think is important, especially look at like the parks and open spaces is if there's a um, opportunity cost or a, a real a, an important time constraint, right? So in terms of um, acquiring open space, right? If you wait 10 years, it may not be there, right? And so that would be another criteria if we're looking at all the buckets that I think would be important to include. I'm not seeing any more questions or comments. Andrew, Andrew, do you want to? Yeah. Or do Wait, you, thank, do you get what you? you yeah. Uh, I, um, I guess I just, this has been a great conversation. I really have one question um, before I summarize what I heard and make sure that Jean and I have the same list um, and that we didn't miss anything from your conversation. So, um, the, what we haven't talked about yet is uh, the second to last bullet, few outside funding options. And this was something that I believe Councilmember Hall brought up in the last meeting. And um, I think uh, from what I remember of that discussion, it was a question about, um, you know, some of these buckets have maybe more grant funding than others. Um, and I just, I wanted to make sure that I understood what outside funding really meant. Are we just talking about what has more grant potential and what doesn't? Or are we also talking about um, outside funding could be like, for example, um, the, the any of the new revenues that we had talked about, like a vehicle license fee, would is that an outside funding? So I just wanted to really clarify what does outside funding mean here? And I don't know if Councilmember Hall can speak to that or if any of um, any of the other task force members want to speak to what does outside funding mean? Go ahead, Zach. Uh, thanks. This is Zach. Um, yeah, I was when I mentioned that at the last meeting, I was certainly thinking of grant opportunities through the county and through the state. Those seem to be um, the most common outside funding sources in the CIP. Um, beyond our own revenues, um, although you bring up an interesting point about the other, the newer revenues, potential revenues that we had discussed at a previous meeting, whether or not that should be considered into that. I think that maybe might be getting a little meta. Um, so I think I think if we focus that one really on this bucket has very few opportunities for grant funding, and even if we open it up to like. Um, state funding through their capital budget or something like that Th that's so um unpredictable that i don't think that's something that we can include as in this bullet either um so i think focusing this bullet on county and state and federal grant opportunities what buckets have the least opportunities for that is is most efficient for our discussion great thank you that that helped clarify it for me. And so um, with that, uh, I'd like to read off the list of what I have heard so far this evening for criteria. Uh, so we already talked about life safety and mandated addresses a pain point. Uh, Council member Goodman suggested that we have another bullet. So, so one of the things that you would vote on is addresses a personal pain point. Another thing that you would vote on is that it addresses a pain point in the community or across the city. And then uh, tangible benefits uh, across the city in your neighborhood. I really feel like these are turning into kind of the same thing. Um, so I would just propose we keep it addresses personal, personal pain point, addresses pain point you know, across the community, if that's all right, because otherwise I think they're morphing into kind of the same thing. Okay, I'm seeing nods, so we'll go with that. Um, ambitious and visionary uh, versus small and defined, I think that also should be two things that we vote on uh, separately. So one would be, how important is this criteria to you, ambitious and visionary, um, you know, go big or go home. Another one, uh, 
that we would vote on is small and defined because I've heard both things. So we'll we'll kind of rank those and see where we end up. Um, few grant funding options. And then the new ones that I have heard through the course of this discussion is uh, that return on investment or uh, bang for the buck. Uh, I heard a couple members talk about that. So we'll add that to the list to be voted on. Um, another one that I heard is future forward. Um, and then also I heard um, that uh, should be extra as in not something that is part of basic government responsibilities. And I don't know how to make that more succinct uh, <laughs> other than that. So hopefully Jean is a fast scribe. <laughs> Um, and then uh, I also heard uh, that another criteria is whether the city government has the trust or credibility to deliver on this bucket, whatever, whatever that bucket ends up being. So perception of community, a trust of the government or the credibility to deliver. Um, that's, that's what I've heard in terms of criteria this evening. Did I get everything and did I get everything correct? So please chime in if I am misrepresenting your thoughts. Okay, I'm not, uh, I'm not seeing, uh, and I'm looking at Cynthia, she's not seeing anything, okay. Um, Great. Well, with that said, I am going to look to Jean, who I'm sure is building the plane somewhat as we're flying here to build in the live poll. Um, so I think that's next. Um, Jean, are you just about ready? Uh, so I will be doing a little bit more building while flying because I haven't actually been able to tweak any of the polls while I've been sharing the slide deck. So I have some pre-built polls that I'll be able to launch pretty quickly, some I'll be doing on the fly. I did want to ask one clarification. I think earlier when we were talking about the community survey, uh, we did say least satisfied, most important from the survey was going to be an additional criteria that we would add to the voting mix. I just want to make sure that uh, that's still on the list just because it was a yes. higher list. So that, yes, that will be in the poll as well. That is great. Thank you, Gene. Um, and so while he is while he is building that, um, I uh, really want to talk about the poll and make sure that we're all on the same page with what this poll is. So um, we'll be asking, we'll be looking at that list of criteria, and we'll be asking you to rank each criteria in importance with one being least important and three being the most important. And so two being obviously somewhere in the middle, right? And so you'll be asked to rank each individual criteria in terms of its importance uh, to you personally, um, as a task force member, as, as a voter as well, um, as somebody with your special uh, collection of knowledge and experience and the reasons why you've been selected to be on this task force. And then, um, in talking with uh, with Cynthia and Jamie, another perspective, and I've heard it mentioned a couple times this evening as well, we also wanted to ask um, you to not just think of what you personally uh, think is important, but also try to put yourself in the shoes of the average Issaquah resident and what they would value and rank according to what you think would be important to the general community. So we're going to be asking you to rank each criteria twice uh, through this exercise, and then we'll see what the results come up with and try to synthesize those lists and then um, and then really try to narrow it down to the top five criteria. So that's the task before us. Um, I wish I had a longer spiel to give Jean more time, but any questions so far? Uh, 
Go ahead, Jamie. Yeah, Andrew, I just had a question because it sounds like you're not forcing us to like one through nine rank. So do we want to set any kind of like you can't do we want to say anything around like the ones <laughs> or is it just whatever people I'm just wondering how the I don't know how the results are going to be coming out at the end, but is there anything that would help make the, the results useful at the end from your perspective or is it just free for all, however? Yeah, I appreciate that. Please don't rank everything as three most important. That would that would be very difficult. <laughs> we we didn't want to have a forced ranking of of one through nine. I thought there would be there's a lot of criteria. I think it's really that would be a difficult exercise. And I'm really hoping that this goes a lot more quickly than that. And that just having a point value of one through three, we'll be able to see what scores at the top. Um, and then we'll be able to discuss, okay, is there an obvious place where we draw the line? Um, can we can we discuss as, as the task force what is going to make um, your job easier as we try to pl apply those criteria? Just a quick reminder, was three most important and one least? Thank you. Yes, that's correct. Um, Council Member Martz, did you have a question? I did, and you, you may have covered this. Um, I bet um, I bet you people would like to know: is are the results anonymized or uh, uh, recorded by individual? Uh, they will be presented uh, anonymously. All right. Thank you. I think we'll all just see the the tallied result. Um, Gene, would a recess be helpful? Should we recess for a couple minutes? So, I think I can actually start launching polls if that would be helpful. Uh, it looks like the functionality, I'm not going to be able to use all of the previously saved ones. So, I'll kind of have to adjust one each time, but I, I can start a poll right now if, if that is kind of uh, where everybody's at and everybody's ready. I see Mr. Voice had a comment. I wasn't sure if you were just. Oh, I was just going to say real quickly, since we had some uh, dead air that um, I appreciated council member halls um, kind of breaking that up as far as revenue stream. So, 1 about having the actual grants, because that was something I was thinking too, because the agenda packet made it seem like we were actually be talking about generating new revenue streams versus looking at grants out there. Um, because obviously, I think probably everybody has maybe a bit of a different opinion about. Those two things, you know, they're not the same. So I just, like I said, filling some dead air. But thanks, Council Member Hall. Good to see you. Okay, so I'm going to launch the first poll and kind of give everybody a chance to, to take a look at it. Make sure there are no kind of questions about it before it's uh, kind of being recorded for the first time. Okay, it looks like there's 11 complete polls. They're still counting some people, obviously, like Andrew and I, who are on the call, who are not going to participate. So I guess quick thumbs up if everybody has finished before I close the poll before the time. Okay, thank you.
Can, okay. can you show that again? Was that, was that, were those the results? Can you show those again really quickly? I thought I was trying to read to see if I needed to answer a question. Oh, sorry. I actually moved on to open up the next poll and I think that removed the previous okay. responses. No problem. Uh, but I'll I'll pause up to the next one if there's interest in seeing the results before we kind of aggregate. We are going to show all of the results at the end. So the this this is kind of more data collection phase, not the kind of analysis and review. So um, let me make sure. Okay, so the next poll should be open. Okay, looks like I have 11 responses. I'll close this poll. Okay, next poll should be open. Okay, looks like 11 responses, so I'll close this poll. Okay, next poll should be up. Okay, that's 11 responses, so I'll close it. Okay, next poll should be up. Uh, 
A uh, quick question, Deputy City Administrator Snyder, was this one that we were going to remove from the poll because it was similar to pain point, the two pain point ones, or did we determine that pain point and tangible benefits were different enough? That's Excellent question, Council Member Hall. We did say we would remove this one. So sorry, Gene. Oh, I know you've been I, I <laughs> building didn't the plane that. while flying. Yeah, sorry about that, Gene. Thank you for bringing that up, Council Member Hall. Okay, open a new poll then. Okay, next poll. Okay, closing this one. Okay, next poll should be up. Okay, looks like 11 responses. And the next poll should be up. Okay, looks like 11 responses, so I'll close the poll.
Okay, next poll should be up. Can I get a quick explanation of this one again? Sure. So this, uh, basically, as we were trying to define the connection to what it meant for community uh, feedback or the community survey input, uh, the definition we landed on was essentially how things identified as the, uh, where residents were the least satisfied, but identified it as the most important in the survey. Uh, that was the connection to community uh, feedback that we would use as kind of what the community is telling us when it comes to priorities. Thanks. And I would just add for that, if you, there were some members who maybe didn't want to use this as a criteria, but still um, have it be part of the considerations and guide priorities or use it as a, I'm going to forget the term now, pressure test, um, then uh, then you would vote not very important if you wanted to use it as a pressure test and not a criteria. Okay, looks like everyone's completed that, so I'll close the poll. And the next poll should be up. Okay, it looks like everyone's responded, so I'll close this.
Okay, next poll should be up. And Jean, by my calculation, it seems like we only have very few left. Is that right? In terms of uh, polls to to complete, yeah, I have two more criteria on the list after this one, so should be wrapping up soon. Okay, next poll should be up. Does anyone else need to be reminded of what we meant by this? So I believe this was council member Goodman's uh, point where uh, I think she used the term extra, which I didn't include, but essentially um, I think her comment was along the lines of there are certain things the government should be expected to just provide without necessarily going out to uh, asking the citizens for, you know, a, a bond or something like that. So I can't remember the exact example council member Goodman uh, used, but Maybe it was the turnabout or something like that, where if it's a simple, you know, roadside project, the government should be able to handle that and it shouldn't be on uh, a bond or the voters to approve something like that. Everybody looks complete on this one, so I will close that poll. Okay, the final poll should be open.
Okay, looks like everybody's responded, so I will close the poll. And that was the last one, Andrew. Great. Thank you, Jean. And now uh, we'd like to show kind of that accumulated results. Hopefully we'll have some clear direction from the polling. Um, one thing is a uh, time check here. Um, it's 7.43, which uh, we wanted to make sure we preserve lots of time for the scoring of the buckets and the breakout groups, because that's really, I think, going to be a very robust conversation among the groups. And so uh, just kind of a reminder to us all to um, keep an eye on the clock as we have the next discussions and really decide on which, which criteria are the most important for uh, you to help make your recommendations on priorities. So once Gene has uh, those results all compiled, then he'll share his screen so you can see what it looks like kind of side by side and pair. Gene's really earning his paycheck tonight, right? I mean. <laughs> No pressure, Gene. It's okay. We'll just start uh, humming the Jeopardy song for you. All right. <laughs> I'm uh, sharing my screen. So if I can uh, just orient you real quick. So essentially, there's there's two columns. This column on the left is how individual task force could you, members. Could you uh, increase the font? Sure. Thank you. Does that work? I think a little bit more. Keep going. There you go. Uh, essentially, responses to the first question are in the left, and responses to the second question are on the right. And I've just sorted the columns real quick from uh, biggest to smallest. So, uh, task force members, as you look at what's on this list, um, what we're hoping to do with this discussion is to kind of quickly come to consensus on what maybe are the top five criteria for us to move forward and score the buckets against. And I see that there are some differences uh, between the rankings assigned um, just from your personal perspective and the ones that you've Prescribed to the community. Um, any any uh, thoughts, comments from the task force members on these results? It, it would be helpful to sort of see criteria and then the two numbers for that criteria side by side. It, 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 I'm trying to make sense of it in this kind of two different orders here. Mm -hmm. I think that Tim, I had the same problem. Um, I think that what happened is they're ranked. Maybe you already understood what he meant. Do you, yeah, okay. Oh, I can put it back to the just original uh, criteria with with the score. I just wanted to also present it uh, where kind of ranked top to bottom since we were hoping to arrive at potentially a you know a top list of criteria. Top list. I think the problem we were having was the they were both ranked, and so it wasn't easy to tell where the discrepancy was. So there's two questions. One is what's the most important, and then this other question, which we don't have a lot of time to dive into if there's a big discrepancy, is if there's a discrepancy between that. I think, Tim, we, all, we are in trouble figuring out what, but it wasn't easy to see what the discrepancy was. Yeah, I know it, it's it's tough to do this on the fly. I get it, but like for me, I look at that. I've been an analyst or whatever. I'd like to see sort of a little heat map and that sort of thing. But 
in my mind, I would sort it by, okay, task force top to bottom, and then look over there at the discrepancy and see, you know, maybe we added both the numbers together. What was the, the, the top priority there as well? Um, and then it would be interesting to look at where there was a big difference as well. Um, and maybe talk through that. I have a suggestion. I don't know how this committee feels like about this, but what if we just for the moment focus on the task force? Because we were asked to serve and make a recommendation to the mayor. And I just, I'm afraid it would be so easy to get bogged down in the difference. Um, and then maybe somebody can run the numbers and see if there's a meaningful difference. And also the difference becomes really important if we put something to the bond, to a bond measure. And so I feel like we're getting ahead of ourselves if we spend too much time right now focusing on the discrepancy or the community, even though to be fair, it was um, the chair and vice chair's idea to separate them because we were getting hung up on how people were gonna try to be putting themselves in the mind of the voter. But I'm just wondering if we should, how people feel about focusing on um, what we think is important. And now I need them to be ranked again. <laughs> I guess what I saw, at least from that first chart that Jean showed, at least the top five uh, from both the task force and the community were consistent. The rankings weren't consistent, no. but at I least the, the top. Just, I'm sorry. I'm trying to encourage us not to all speak out of chair. And here I am jumping in. I think that's the problem. I think that's what it looked like, but I don't think that's the case. I think it was we were misreading it because of the way it was presented. Um, I know Mr. Boyce had a comment. I, I do want to ask if we do we want to focus on the task force's responses at this time with our remaining time this evening? And if so, then I think I suggest column B gets ranked in order again. Is there anyone in here um, that thinks we should dive into the description? The difference right at this point. I'm looking at, I think with the remaining time, we should. My recommendation is to focus on what we think. Does anyone have a problem with that? And then we can address the discrepancy maybe in the next time. So then, um, I'm sorry, then could we have them ranked in order again? The first, the, the, the task force's response is ranked in order. Thank you. Or Jean, sorry about that. So while we're mulling this over, let's go ahead and um, hear the comments and Mr. Voice and then um, Mr. Book, just go ahead and go right after Mr. Voice. Okay, well, as far as just the poll, I, I do agree with you, Chair Kras. I think um, I think we can get too bogged down trying to pretend or trying to think of the way the average resident would think. Um, there's a reason people were asked to be here, so I'm kind of more on page with you on that. Now, I... I agree with Mr. Brook. When I originally saw it, I think they were ranked as far as as popularity. And I saw five out of six basically mesh. They were a little bit wonky, <laughs> lack of a better word. But when I wrote them down, and I think it was the very first time we saw this graph, yeah, address addresses pain point across city. That might have been our number one rank, but I'm pretty positive when I looked over, it was like three or four because the top five that I have uh, were the pain point across city, uh, the least satisfied, you know, the matrix basically making sure it works in conjunction with that, return on investment, life and safety, and ambitious vision. So even though I, I know we're trying to move away from what the residents might think, I tell me if I'm wrong. I, I think I saw what Mr. Brook did, which was, I actually, I did see them ranked as far as popularity and those five out of six basically coincided, even though they were a little bit skewed. So I think that's what I saw. 
Yeah, Jason, and that's what I saw as well and commented real quickly about is that at least the top five, I thought, were consistent on both charts. Um, it's just that the rankings were different. But I think that that's pretty, uh, you know, a pretty good definition of, of the top five when, when you have that kind of consistency. And then I, I guess in terms of the ranking, I would support to be more um, more appropriate to go off of the task force ranking rather than the community ranking, just because kind of like Jason just said as well, a lot easier for us to decide on what we're going to think to be appropriate versus across the board in the community. But I think the top five is, I think that chart showed pretty good that what the top five really is. Right, and I agree with you. And and again, it, it breaks my heart because I really wanted Future Forward to be up there, but that's okay. I certainly could be wrong. Uh, Jamie, do you have a comment? And then I really want to make sure that we get to the bucket ranking. That's the, the meat. Um, I changed my mind. I'm, I'll pull up. Okay, so it sounds like we're ready to then do the next step. Andrea, is that right? Yeah, uh, that would be my question. So if that's the case, then those top five criteria that we're really looking at and scoring um, the buckets against are addresses pain points across the city, those community pain points, the return on investment or bang for the buck, uh, taking a look at which bucket addresses the least satisfied and most important things mentioned from the community in the community survey, and uh, life safety, buckets that address that more than others, and then also buckets uh, that maybe have, that are more ambitious and visionary. Um, is everybody comfortable with those five before we move on? Okay, okay, great. Uh, seeing that, then uh, we will be breaking out into uh, small discussion groups. We did say that we wanted to end at 8.30, and so because of that, I would suggest that we uh, reconvene as a group, um, let's say uh, 8.15. Um, if your group's done earlier, then maybe we have an opportunity to reconvene earlier if everybody, if this is a simple exercise. But at this time, uh, we will be separating you out into breakout groups to really discuss and rank um, or score the buckets across this. Now, this is maybe going to be a difficult activity because um, what we want you to think of here is the buckets on the whole. You've seen some of the projects in those buckets. We're not comparing projects, we're not picking projects, but to understand, you know, averaging those projects out, which, which of those buckets addresses um, those criteria, you know, the most. And so um, that's really how we want you to score it. It may be helpful in the course of your conversations to reference the CIP to remind yourself, well, life, life, life safety or return on investment, what do we really think is in this bucket? I, I caution against getting too far into the weeds, um, but you know, maybe some of those references are helpful without, um, without focusing on, on each of these projects, but getting an idea of, of what's in the bucket may be helpful. Uh, I um, will be in one of the breakout sessions. Jean will be in one of the breakout sessions in the other breakout session as a resource. Um, same with our chair and vice chair. We'll try to split it up that way so that if you have questions, need information or guidance, um, we should be able to help you with that. Um, the goal here is for each team to come up with their, with their list, their one score. So we don't want five members on a team and come back with five different scores, right? We really want one from each team and then we'll come back as a group and have a report out session from each team and try to reconcile those two, um, those two score sheets uh, to determine what are our bucket priorities. Um, as, a, as a reminder, we're, we're not talking about what's the most important, but really what should we be trying to focus on first. And, um, and also, this is gonna be a draft list. We're gonna take this list and we're gonna use it in context of our next conversation about public financing and how do we fund this list. And so the recommendations may change as we discuss financing options, but it's I think going to be really helpful to have this context as we discuss um, financing options in our next meeting. So those are the um, instructions for your breakout groups and also where we're headed. Any questions before we break out? No. 
I, okay. I had a question, Andrea. Um, do we want to agree on a scoring methodology for like given a bucket? It seems like it'd be good to get consistent results back to have both groups speaking the same language. Thank you. I forgot to mention that. Thank you so much. Um, I thought we'd stick with the one through three uh, because that's what we just used. It's a muscle we're now familiar with. And so uh, if we can grade each bucket, uh, you know, one through three, one meaning addresses the criteria the least, um, and one being addresses the criteria the most, uh, and three being addresses the criteria the most, then um, we will tally up those scores and uh, hopefully that gets us that nice list. Great question, thank you for asking. <laughs> Okay, well then I think we're ready to uh, go into our breakout groups. And I think this is where Tina is gonna step back in and perform her wizardry. Yes, uh, I can. Uh, do you want me to set it, but since it's eight o'clock, do you want me to set it for 15 minutes? Do you want 18? Let's do it in 15. All right, let me change the time stamp here and hitting send, go to your breakout rooms. <laughs> All right, the group got smaller, and I'm going to go on mute and let um, Jean your, be your facilitator. Okay, I'm sharing my screen again just to kind of help everyone kind of wrap their heads around what we're trying to accomplish. If I can just get kind of a thumbs up that everybody sees and can read and it's legible. Okay, great. Um, so, uh, I think everyone understands the prompt. Is there any questions about process or what we're trying to accomplish before we jump in? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Just one more time, if you could run through a scenario. Are we supposed to be, uh, for example, the line number 15 addresses pain point across the city? Do we have uh, do we have to distribute one, two, and three across transportation, parks, and trails, and facilities? Or are we doing a vertical one, two, three? Like, I'm not sure how we're. we're yeah, using so ours. my understanding is just, you know, kind of where they intersect. So, how does transportation uh, address the criteria of addresses the pain point across the city? One being the least, three being uh, the most. So, I, th I think we're just assigning one through three to each bucket in each criteria. So, one being the least of the three buckets or one being just low, like not I, very well. <laughs> That's why I'm not kind of, is it a relative or is it just like on its own, you know, yep, it's really high or nope, it's really low. Oh, I see what you mean. I took it as on its own. I don't know if anybody else is seeing this as relative to the other buckets, but. Yeah, I'm I'm good with that. I just because there happen to be three buckets and there are three numbers, I just didn't know if you were trying to again look for a a force distribution there or if there if we can have like for instance addresses pain point across the city, all three transportation, parks and trails and facilities could be a one or could be a three. All of them could, correct? That's how I took it. I don't know if anybody else took it as a, a relative, hey, one through three bucket each one or rank each one so that there's only one score attached to each. Uh, but I took it as you could assign ones to all or threes to all. You can, and that's how the other breakout room will be evaluating it as well. Thank you, I appreciate that. And if you just let me respond momentarily, um, trying to make sure Andrea has the, uh, the SharePoint list so she can also facilitate the same discussion in the other group. Well, while you do that, I'll just um, start by saying, it seemed to me from our conversations previously, and then also um, from this data that transportation seems to be pointing towards a three in that first one for address this pain point across the city. Um, so I was just curious if anyone else felt differently, if that felt like the most to me. 
sum up, sum up. One other quick question. Um, so utilities is not on there. Is that we're not being asked to evaluate that bucket? So I, I can clarify with Andrea the. The intent before the meeting was just to focus on these 3, I think. Um, obviously, you had the question earlier about how we were addressing utilities and. Um, it's, it's a fair point that we, we didn't exclude it, but at this point, uh, I don't think the other group is considering it. I think they're. Oh, no, they are. <laughs> they added utility, so I can. Oh, geez. <laughs> Why don't I add a utility just so we yeah, can. I thought I had heard Andrea say that we were going to leave it off. And then afterwards, if after we had a conversation and kind of justified our lists, if we felt like we needed to add it, we could. But if they're doing it, I guess we might as well. They don't so follow that... directions. <laughs> We are still kind of building the plane while flying, so I, I appreciate the clarification, Susan, just because it does obviously uh, allow us to make sure we're kind of make sure our responses are are something we can compare to the other group. So, and you're doing uh, a great job. Thank you. Thank you again. <laughs> for, thank you for shepherding us through this. Okay, so starting then at the top, criteria addresses pain point across the city. Um, I think Councilmember Hall's point years starting with a three. Was there any other kind of okay threes for that one uh, park? Uh, how do uh, kind of the different board members believe this one should be ranked? Well, I'm not sure I would describe it as pain, depending on the the project is. But if it's addressing something across the city, I think that has the potential to also be a three. Right, because we moved from the word like most impactful or something like that to pain point. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can. I'm, I'm not I'm, thinking pain point park center. Uh. Yeah, I was thinking pain point was really important that word, and it, it was like solving a problem. So if there's a perceived mm -hmm. problem with parks and trails, then I think that would get a higher number. But if there's not like this burning problem then I'd put it lower. I'd put it a one or a two. Yeah, I think it kind of depends on what the, how great the need is, I think it's, um, but I think that gets up the project. So, and, and I guess when I think of addresses pain point or need across the city, um, I think of parks and trails as being a, a I don't know why I think of them as being a little bit different than transportation, just because they're, um, I don't know, it's like accessible. I know transportation is anyway, but accessible to everybody. And we're known for parks and trails. Um, anyway, I, I want to hear what everybody else says. Um, I, I go back to that graph that we first had that showed that, um, our residents tend to be very satisfied with our parks and trails. So I'm not sure that they would perceive any of our parks and trails as having a pain point. Yeah. So in that sense, I would probably give it a one. In order yeah, maybe for now we do one there too. Yeah. Okay, so okay. seems like consensus is trending towards a one. Is that Good enough to assign and move on or more conversation around that. Is somebody making notes about what our comments are? Because I'm wondering if this is. Addressing what we talked about earlier, but revisiting whether the criteria is the right criteria. The words, um, anyway. Uh, I. I've written down your comments, uh, Councilmember Goodman, so we can kind of uh, potentially uh, assign it a one and kind of just make sure that as we uh, kind of report out that we're kind of saying it, we're focused more on the pain point and not necessarily the 
you know, how an individual project may provide a solution if the community is looking for something. Does that kind of get at what you were trying to convey? Uh, There's some nuance there. Yeah, I think just enough notes to let the other group know what the thoughts were behind the one is fine. Okay. So since we put one for that into Kathy's point, should we put one for parks and trails under least satisfied slash most important from survey yeah. two? Let's do it. Just do it. Good. Seven minutes left. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess trying to quickly wrap up the first criteria then facilities for how they address pain points across the city. One. Okay. Any disagreement? Oh, wrong box there. One. Utilities. Uh, any thoughts there on how they address pain points across the city? I would give that a higher importance because uh, no matter what type of utility we're looking at, they all tend to be essential. So if there's improvements to our infrastructure, I would think it, I'd rate it at least a two, if not a three, as addressing pain points. Um, and it might be because I'm thinking of things like internet and, and water right now that are extremely important, but also as we grow, um, I'm thinking things that come up in that utility bucket um, would be important. I think I would actually advocate maybe a one or at least changing the way we're talking about it because An Andrew wanted us to kind of avoid the word important and use more priority and recognize that they're not the same, right? So like utilities, um, at this point in time, improvements there aren't necessarily addressing pain points. Um, and so, whereas you know, utility improvements are important, incredibly important, um, maybe they're a lower priority. Maybe I'm just speaking in circles now because a two is still a lower priority than a three. So whatever. <laughs> Kathy knows me too well. I thought there was maybe I'm uh, misremembering, but I thought there was at least one sort of critical infrastructure element of utilities that, like, if it were ignored by the city, there could be a disaster. You know, like a water breakage and half the city doesn't have water. You know, one of those types of things. Those redundancy systems. So that's why I was thinking more of a two there rather than a one. Okay. But this is this is our, you know, our educated, semi-educated point of view and probably not the typical Issaquah residents point of view. It seems like two is the consensus. More than a one, not necessarily as high as transportation. So it, we can leave it. Uh, so the next criteria is return on investment. Thoughts there on how transportation uh either addresses that criteria or does not <clears throat> i don't i i don't really think of transportation as roi um the projects are expensive i mean they do a lot for us physically and in many other ways but it is an investment I, so i i i'm looking i'll look to others for different points of, of view on that. I mean, investing in mobility, I mean, didn't we talk about re return on investment being you know, meaningful over time also, which was different than future forward? I don't know. Impactful, I guess. I mean, it, yeah. And I, I was thinking of it also as it may be a big investment, but it will pay dividends over and over once we can start addressing some of the issues like the city can continue to grow the you know people won't like move away because they can't stand the traffic anymore you know it, it's kind of a maybe a stabilizing force for continued growth so that's i guess i was thinking about it in that terms on return on investment i wasn't necessarily thinking about it as like the financial return, like the profitability of something. I think of this one, when I think of transportation, I think of um, uh, how much we're gonna get out of it, the bang for the buck, the, mm -hmm. yeah, not exactly. I mean, if you got a 40, 
fifty million dollar uh, dirty word bypass project, then um, you know if you talk about it in terms of actually return on investment financially, I'm thinking it's hard to calculate that. So I was not quite thinking of it that way. Um, Based on what all of you are saying, then I would agree, and I would I would give it a high a much higher importance. I think we're getting into the fact that you can you can interpret return differently, mm -hmm. um, and the other group might interpret return differently. So I suggest we skip it and move on to the next one for now. But I don't know what you guys think. We can kind of put it in the parking lot and come back to it if we've we got don't two like minutes. down. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so the next criteria, least satisfied, most important from the survey. For transportation, I'd say it's a three, just because I know it was it was on the chart, it was in the CI, um, CIP, in the strategic plan. Um, I give it a three. Okay. okay. So facilities, uh, in terms of uh, the least satisfied, most important. Just pulling up the graph now. And to be honest, I'm not certain where this landed, but you know, facilities would be police, fire, city hall, um, those kind of things. I'm I'm not sure if there was. Yeah, a... it looks like most of them fell into sat high satisfaction and either continued emphasis or exceeds expectations. Can we give it a two? Yeah. Okay. And then, uh, Councilmember Hall, if you still have the graph up in terms of where utilities might have landed. Is that more in the uh, yeah upper it's quadrant? exactly so maybe one okay if other people feel the same way yeah I agree okay uh, tackling the next one life and safety well for transportation you seem I think that would be a three especially for okay. safety. So would facilities be a three two then? Yeah. If it includes fire and yeah. safety. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. It could. Um parks and trails obviously lower. I don't know if there's a consensus around a, a one or a two. Yeah, I and I don't think the life in, in life and safety was quality of life. I think it was more of the you know, yeah. creating danger sort of a life thing. Yeah. So. Yeah. So one. One. It, utilities might be two. Mm -hmm. You know, heat and electricity and you know, things. Oh, good point. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I if facilities really is a three. I don't know. I mean, when I hear I hear uh, fire and police, of course, super important. But things like city hall buildings and things I like point. I don't know. I'd propose a two for facilities, but I could go either. Go with two. Two. Okay. Sounds good to me. Anybody else? Uh, ambitious and visionary. <laughs> three. Three. Okay. If we're going to address transportation, it better be a three. <laughs> <laughs> we better be very visionary. <laughs> I might give parks two trails. to parks and trails because mm -hmm. I do think yeah. they'd be ambitious and visionary. Tim Flood, you're there. What are you thinking? Oh. I've got to chew on it. I, I'm, uh, I'm at a loss for words first time. Usually you guys are saying I talk too much. Now you call on me here, so I'm not, I'm caught me flat footed. <laughs> yeah, so I've never said you talk too much, so. Tim's the only one that says he talks too much. Um. Agreed. So, uh, as I at, like, when I looked at like ambitious and visionary versus um, small and defined, right? We kind of had them on the ends of the spectrum, and I think 
the connotation is like expensive, right? So ambitious is synonymous with expensive, and that's why that would be why I might shy away from it, right? In terms of that versus small and defined, sounds like it's not very impactful. But the positive is it maybe it's we can do multiple projects or not have to go for a bond at all, right? Um, so I think as I look at those two, I, it's like I would evaluate every project. You know, maybe we would have merit. Uh, anywhere on that spectrum, right? So I don't know how to how to how to grade that. Like small and defined got like the second worst overall rating, right? And I think like okay. Um right. we've, we've already that, had our we've already been asked for a time check. Um I, I'm yeah. just gonna say when it, I don't think of I'll just jump in with going ahead a little bit. I don't think of utilities as needing to be ambitious and visionary. So for me, that would be an easy one. But because I don't know where rate facilities. <laughs> I I think based on what I'm hearing, might we might rank facilities a one or a two. I can think of some projects that in that would be considered facilities that the public might appreciate would be ambitious and visionary. Um, you know, a new city hall with an amazing um, uh, new public pool in the bottom, so in the bottom floor, so that it is a huge draw to the community, which is actually something that people have mentioned. So that might be ambitious and visionary, but I think for the most part, you're not expecting that your police station and your fire stations and your you know, well housings are going to be ambitious and visionary. So the two at the most. But two. At the most. Well, are, are we supposed to think of this as the current? I know we're not supposed to get into projects, but are we supposed to think of it as like the current mix, like the current bucket, the current facilities bucket should be considered ambitious and visionary? Or because I, I don't see think we're supposed to think about what's in the bucket. So what it could be. We could think about too. Well, I'm I'm gonna guess that it's what is because the whole purpose of this exercise is that the CIP has a huge amount of unfunded items. This current CIP, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, so, one or one or two. I'm fine yeah, I'm fine with the two. I'll just, maybe we can get back up to return in, on investment. Okay. Can I so you turn your camera on. What do you have a comment or anything about time check? I'm just um, in communication with the other group, and I want to. Are we ready to bring them back and see where they're at? Do we know if they finished? Yeah, looks like they finished. Oh my okay. gosh! I don't know if we want to. I don't know if we want to quickly try and do return on investment before they come back, so that we can kind of. Oh, they're back. Have a. Complete uh, table to share and compare. Go for it. What do we think about leaving it blank and explaining why? And then trying to better understand how they. A three, three for transportation, and then the yeah. others are are tougher to define, right? I mean, I think that's that's fair. And then encapsulates a lot, right? I mean that. Okay, I'm good with that. Except they totaled our theirs and we didn't total our, total ours, so. <laughs> I would say the return on investment for parks is also a three. Um, I agree. And then let's make facilities two and utilities two. two. <laughs> yeah. Sure. All right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing what time pressure does. <laughs> Did we get our members back? I don't think so. Please. All breakout sessions will close in 15 seconds. Okay. Okay, well, it looks like we've joined back together. Um, Cynthia, can you hear me? Yeah, um, I can now. Your your video's off, and uh, I think we were probably all just waiting for you to say something. Okay. 
strange. I can't see anybody else's videos either. So I may just uh, leave and join the meeting again and see if that helps. Um, in the meanwhile, I'm wondering uh, if, um, Dean, if you want to show um, the rest of the group what the results were from your team. Sure. So I'm sharing my screen now. Everybody can uh, just see it real quick. Um, and uh, kind of looking at the numbers, obviously we, as a or the group that I help facilitate ranked uh, transportation uh, fairly high throughout all of the criteria. And uh, if you look at kind of the sums of the columns, um, kind of the parks, trails, and utilities facilities all kind of had the same, all the facilities had essentially one more point. So uh, that's essentially how we uh, ranked them. There were kind of some comments about the different nuances though, as uh, we went through the list, just how uh, kind of the definition of a pain point or the different uh, kind of nuances of the return on investment, not necessarily being only financial, but kind of the other benefits of the community. Uh, that was kind of how some of those uh, numbers were assigned and some of the thought process behind it. Andrea, have you uh, returned? I see that she's listed as a participant, but I don't believe that she's connected by audio. Okay, I can uh, kind of toggle over to the second group and uh, expand this. Uh, would anybody from that second group like to kind of summarize the feedback or comments? Sure, I can hop in. This is Jamie. Um, I think we came up with similar results, maybe not as resounding for transportation as the, the first group. Um, we did feel like there was some nuance, especially return, around return on investment, like transportation projects are really expensive. And so they high impact, but also high cost. Um, but I think in the end, we came up with the same overall recommendations. And then we did talk about as well that we didn't, as a group, feel like utilities was probably something we we thought would uh be in the same category as as the other three categories that we felt like that probably should be something that we we start to set toward to the side um one thing that the group did highlight as well is that this was done really quickly there's obviously a ton of nuance and it's something that uh while we we came up with a result we don't want to <laughs> it wasn't something that we we wanted to take to the grave with our we wanted to make sure that it was something that would be, stay sort of um Kind of pliable um, as, as it was done quite quickly, but uh, did come up with the same result in the end. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, doesn't look like Andrea's joined back yet, so I guess a uh, quick time check. It is 8.27, uh, kind of looking at the chair. If you'd like to have any uh, further comments on this or, or kind of transition to a wrap up. Well, it seems like a good time to maybe wrap up and um, we can certainly, um, you know, uh, I mean, I think everyone's going to want to chew on this and revisit this and it's probably not a good time to start doing that. Um, she's gone to next steps. Yeah. So, so the, I think the interesting thing is the next meeting is the return to public finance. There were a lot of questions. Um, I think maybe everybody probably agrees that we want to spend more time on what we just did, um, but it is 8.28 and I think we should uh, push that out. Does anybody disagree? It seems like a way big topic to try to tackle in two minutes. I think it was a super interesting exercise, so that's for sure. Um, so I'm going to suggest that, um, so, I don't know, uh, Tina or Jean, if you have any other um, business or announcements, the only thing to note is um, just two weeks from tonight, we'll be back at it talking about the finance um, and then we'll try to make sure that we get a 
make sure we work into the um, the work program, you know, the schedule to to digest all this for sure. Uh, looks like Councilmember Hall has a question. Uh, thank you. Super quick. I was just hoping um, sometime before the next meeting, though, if uh, the results of each group and the list from the initial polling could be sent out to everyone so we could, as it were, digest it more in the next couple of weeks. And I know Andrea's not on, but the I, staff could do that. Hi, council helpful. member. Oh. Hi, Councilmember Hall. Uh, this is Andrea. I dialed in uh, and I just heard the last 30 seconds. So I heard your question. Yes, absolutely. We can send that out. Thank you. Well, uh, if nobody objects, I, I think it's a good time to adjourn. It's a funny time, very kind of a pregnant pause. There's just a very uh, kind of sub a significant moment. Um, but uh, hopefully we'll have plenty of time to digest that and yeah, having those materials would be really helpful. So uh, if anybody objects, I'd like to just thank everybody for their time and adjourn and look forward to picking this big fat ball up again in two weeks. Thanks everybody.